Hello everybody, um, here to give you a quick demonstration in Nuno felting. So uh, it's on the table behind me here. I uh, spared you all the time that I took so far to fill this up, but just to catch you up. Basically, we've got a silk chiffon down on the table on top of the bubble wrap. And then I've coated it entirely in one direction with uh, this super fine uh, merino wool. And now I've turned around and I'm doing it all again in the other direction. So that's what you're tuned in for the, the last bit of. And after that's done, I'm gonna then put it with some, uh, I'm gonna use some silk and put some silk on top of it. And it's gonna felt up very beautifully. Um, oops, excuse me. I did this, I know it's all white, it's hard to see, but uh, I did this in my class yesterday when I taught uh, intro to wet felting. And I'm just in love with the texture that came out. So I've decided to make it on a much bigger scale. So thanks for watching and just, um, you know, check it out. Excuse me. Of course, I've saved the, the back-breaking part for the video. <laughs> so all I like to do is lay the fiber and then hold it down with my hands and stretch it. Basically as thin as you can get it without it breaking. Just like so. The second layer is also tricky because you need to try to not mess up the first layer, <laughs> which I've done a few times, but all in all, it's going pretty good. I wish you could touch this merino wool. It is like the softest thing that I've ever touched, I think. <laughs> see that you don't want there to be a twist in it because then it's not going to draft as much as easily as you'd like it to looks really awkward reaching all the way across the table like this and it is but I, I just like to have it going always in the same direction I find you can get more consistency that way so just gonna grin and bear it I might as well just talk a little bit what I'm gonna do next after I'm done filling it all up and yes it looks a bit like a there's a slice of pie there I'm not sure why that happened or what I'll do about it but I'm gonna douse this entire thing in cool soapy water then I'm gonna roll it up in a sandwich in a bubble wrap sandwich and uh, roll roll it for about half an hour. You can't roll it too much. So what am I gonna do? Like. Last one. First layer, 
the wool layer. Now I'm gonna use this, which is uh, Eerie Silk. It's uh, really amazingly beautiful. And I'm going to draft it and then lay it down and spread it out in a sort of in a random fashion. That's one thing I love about teaching classes is I always gives it forces me to do the thing like wet felting and every time I just for the sake of the students to see how it works I experiment with something new and I sometimes discover things I want to do. Everything, when it goes on a bigger scale, gets harder, for sure. So. Oh, what am I thinking? I don't know. I'm gonna start over here. I don't know how much the video picks up <laughs> of this very thin white stuff. So silk is a, um, it's a filament. It's not a fiber. So unlike merino wool or any wool for that matter, it, it does not shrink. However, if you put it on thinly enough, it does get incorporated and it has to go somewhere when everything else around it shrinks. So it kind of does a beautiful squiggly thing and it adds shine. Again, here's, this is, this is my one from yesterday. This is the wool side and there is silk in there. Um, definitely visible by the, by the eye. I'm still really kind of aiming for this texture on the back where, the, the, where there was no wool, but uh, figured some silk does not hurt. Um, yeah, who knows what this is even gonna be. I've got some ideas. One amazing thing about felting is how much it shrinks. So despite this looking like quite a big piece, but my idea, and I haven't decided for sure yet, is actually to cut it up into smaller squares um, after I finish rolling it and um, make little mats, little beautiful little square mats for putting things on, like a, I don't know, piece of needle felting or a crystal or anything you'd like, just a little altar but we'll see, because cutting, cutting is kind of scary. And I hope you don't mind the music. I really couldn't do this without music. textures that come out when you drag fibers to the side.
So in case anyone's wondering, the Erie silk, it's spelled E-R-I. It's uh, that's referring to the, what breed of silkworm it is. So that there's Tussa, there's Erie, there's Bombix. Um, I feel like I'm missing one. I don't remember. And Erie, actually, and I could be wrong, but this is what I read, was that it's one of the only silks that allow the silkworm to escape. So, it's some people like that. <clears throat> that nothing, no insect died. Okay. So yeah, we're getting really close. Just gonna finish off that last bit where the tripod was. <laughs> and um, then it's on to the next stage, the rolling stage, so. I'm back. Uh, funny story, I filmed myself wetting this beautiful um, piece of felting and my camera, I did it for about 20 minutes and the camera actually wasn't recording so it had run out of space. So now I'm just kind of trying to do it again so you can see what I was doing. So um, I'm using this uh, bonsai mister and some cool soapy water and uh, I really like the mister because it kind of just rains very gently down. So I'm just gonna put that down and just get a couple spots that seem to be a little bit dry on the edge, seems like. You really, uh, it's very important that everything is thoroughly wet. If there's, if there's anything that's still dry, it's just not gonna felt. So, I put about two bowls full of water on this. But, and as you can see, it's all, it's really quite, really quite wet. So, that's that. It just would've taken longer had, had my camera been recording the last time. And now we're on to the next stage, which is to uh, roll it up. gonna just fiddle a little bit on this edge here. Okay, so I've got a giant piece of bubble wrap. Holding it over to get it nice and straight. And then, big pool noodle here. Start rolling it from the end that is uh, folded in half, if you're working with one big piece. And that way, if you see that there's some slack here, you can uh, pull on it and keep it taut. This would be a handy time to have a, a friend to help, but it's totally doable by yourself, like so. So there, rolled all the way up. Now there's a couple ways to go about this at this point in time. One, uh, one way is you just start rolling. Like, so it basically, according to the book I read, they say to roll it 200 times and then unroll it and roll it up from the other direction and roll it 200 more times. So 400 total rolls. I'm not the type to count, so I timed myself and it looks like I can do about 50 rolls in a minute. So that would be about four minutes of rolling per side. But uh, to be safe, I like to teach my students to do it about 10 minutes on each side. So that's what we're gonna do now. And you want to just, especially when you're working with such a big piece, you want to uh, move your hands around and, and get a different spot every time. Okay, so I'm going to put it back on time lapse and you're going to see me rolling it for about 20 minutes. <laughs> 